it's so beautiful. Ooh, we look scratches. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the ferret show. Oh. Today we're going to be talking about looking after your ferrets once they've been desexed. All three of my ferrets have been desexed. Um, because fe females need to, because um, if they're not, then they die from aplastic an an anemia when they come in season. So it's really important to get them desexed. And if you're not experienced with ferrets, then don't breed them. Lately, I've been seeing a lot of people breeding their ferrets. Um, one, breeding ferrets can be extremely complicated. And you really know what you need. You really need to know what you're doing with ferrets. It's not a beginner's activity. Two, we have so many ferrets. What are you guys doing? We have so many ferrets in um, ferret um, rescues and shelters. So please don't breed because most of the time they're going to end up in a shelter. Three, I've also heard of some breeders encouraging people to breed their ferrets. What the? I mean, seriously? Please don't do that, especially if they're newbies. They won't have anything, they won't know anything about breeding ferrets, let alone looking after a ferret. You're just setting them up for failure. Those ferrets are probably going to be inbred. Um, they're going to end up in shelters or given to someone who doesn't give a shit about ferrets. And that is absolutely not on because we're here to look after these cute babies and make sure that they have the best and happiest lives ever. So we need to be responsible ferret owners. If you do see someone encouraging someone to breed their ferrets, um, you know, there are some extremely good breeders out there and I'm not saying that there aren't, but I'm just saying that it's not an activity that absolutely everyone should participate in, especially newbies. So get your ferret desexed because it'll end up cheaper for you to get your ferrets desexed in the long run because baby ferrets take a lot of time and money. Um, so if you think that desexing a ferret is expensive, it's not. Looking after baby ferrets, feeding them, and all of that kind of stuff is expensive, not desexing. And plus, any complications that arise with the breeding, you'll have to pay for a vet to get it all fixed. So desex your ferret. You can also implant your ferrets uh, with a super loin implant. Uh, so some ferret owners do that. Ask your vet about it and see if it's available in your area as well. Yuki has the implant, so um, when she got D6, she had an implant implanted as well. Okay, so what do you do when your ferret has been D6? And congratulations, obviously, if you're watching this video, you're thinking or already have D6 your ferret, so yay for you! Very excited. <laughs> you're a responsible ferret owner, which I love to see. So first of all, what you do when your ferret has had surgery of any kind or has had been or has been desexed, you need to separate it, put them in a separate cage. We have a smaller cage um, which we use as a sick cage. So anytime the ferrets are sick or a ferret is sick or has had surgery, then we always put that sick ferret into the separate cage. Um, we pat it out with heaps of blankets, warm, clean blankets, because uh, ferrets tend to drop their body temperature during surgery, so it's important to keep them warm, especially after they've been under anesthetic. The anesthetic can make them drop their body temperature. So lots of warm blankets is a must. So plenty of blankets, lots and lots of blankets. Are you all wrapped up, Sammy? Oh, you're all wrapped up in a blanket, nice and warm and cuddly. Oh, Ooh, it is warm. <laughs> so, plenty of blankets just to keep them nice and warm. And make sure that the blankets are clean because obviously you don't want any gunk getting on uh, the wounds as well. So you don't want the wounds to be infected, so you have to make sure the cage and the blankets, everything is clean at all times. Uh, just to avoid infections to the wound. 
Keeping them in a separate smaller cage will also minimize movement and this is especially important for the first few days while the wound is trying to heal. Obviously you want to monitor the ferret, especially the first few days after the surgery is crucial. Um, you'll find that they might be a little bit slower, a little bit more sluggish, they might want to sleep a bit more and this is normal after surgery and desexing, especially the girls, tends to be kind of a big deal as well because you have to really um, cut in and get get their reproductive organs out. With males, it's not as big a surgery, especially if their balls have dropped, because all you have to do is cut the balls out. So it's a bit easier for the boys. But um, still, it, for any ferret that has had any type of surgery, you have to monitor it very carefully, especially after the first few days after surgery. Make sure that um, they are getting better and better each day. Um, and if you notice at any stage that they're not getting better, and if you have a hunch that they might be getting worse, then take them to the vet immediately. Look at your fluffy ears, you're so fluffy. And water. So make sure that you have plenty of food and water in the cage for them. Uh, and if your ferret has not eaten within the first 12, 24 hours, then it's worth taking it to the vet because they should be eating within the first 12 hours at least. Um, if not, then there might be some further complications. So just make sure that your ferret is eating and drinking water. Make sure your ferret is getting plenty of rest uh, and is in a dark, quiet spot. So what we like to do is cover the cage with blankets after they've had surgery just to make sure that it's nice and quiet um, and cozy and dark in the cage so that they don't have to be stimulated by anything else. Um, and we keep them in a quiet spot again just so that they can rest peacefully and get a really good sleep which is really important for the healing process. No exposure to the elements, obviously, as well. The last thing that a ferret that has just had surgery needs is to be out in the cold, in the rain, in the snow, or in the severe heat. They need a really balanced environment to be able to heal properly. Nice, balanced, clean, quiet environment and warm as well. Give your ferrets medication. So it's really important that you give your ferrets the medication that your vet has given you as prescribed every day or however your vet has suggested you give it to them. So don't miss out on a dose of medication. It's really important that they get everything that the vet has prescribed to them. No litter box. Don't include a litter box in um, the cage that you keep them in just because with litter boxes they tend to be raised a little bit higher which means that their bellies can scrape along it when they're getting in and getting out and that can cause irritation to the stitches um, and to the wound area in general. So take out the litter box, just sprinkle um, you know, litter, uh, the pellets, the pe litter pellets along the bottom of the cage in one corner and that way they'll just be able to go in a corner without having to jump over or scrape their wounds over the litter box. So that's another tip. And clean the cage daily, sometimes even twice a day depending on how messy it gets because the last thing you want is for feces to get into the wound and cause an infection. So it's really important to keep that cage clean um, so that your ferret can heal properly. So make sure that after surgery you're looking after your little babies. They need lots of TLC, just like when we do when we're sick or have had surgery. We need lots of tender loving care and we need to have cleanliness around us and just need to be looked after basically. So same goes with ferrets. We need to look after our little babies, don't we? Yes we do. Thanks for watching today's video. If you've enjoyed it and think that others would benefit from it, then please share around, share the love and give it a thumbs up as well. Um, if you also want to download a free Ferret Emergency Care ebook, then join the Ferret World newsletter. Go to the website at www.ferretworld.com 
sorry, ferret-world.com and um, you'll be able to see a space where you can sign all your details in and download a free ferret emergency care book with heaps of information on diseases, on looking after ferrets after surgery and all that kind of great stuff. So it's all free, it's high quality, it's been checked by a vet as well. So um, make sure you get that. I'll see you next week. Bye!